much that is being said about artificial intelligence at the moment is beyond exaggeration. It is nothing short of ridiculous. But that may only be so because the truth that is being hidden from you by all the fantasy stuff is even more frightening. But first, the fiction. The lie is that robots can develop minds of their own and then turn on humans. Some go so far as to suggest that the robots will learn how to reproduce themselves, and by doing that, they will start a civilization of their own, a higher form of life than the one we, their creators, now have. In this video, I hope to rip the cover off the myth of so-called sentient robots. A sentient robot is one that supposedly has feelings. Such fantasies do not exist and never will. Just Google sentient robots and you will find plenty of experts who know more about artificial intelligence than me saying exactly what I am saying here. Sentient robots are simply not going to happen, ever. The people who talk about so-called sentient robots cannot even tell you how we human beings came to have the kind of feelings that we experience. We say that things like anger, sadness, and love have something to do with our brains, but if they do, then we are talking about something more than simple synapses and neurotransmitters. See, we cannot even explain something as basic as DNA, which is in every cell of our bodies, and which seems to have as much to do with our personalities as anything that can be found in the brain. The truth is that we know even less about what our brains have to do with human thought than we know about DNA. So, what is the truth about these androids that are popping up in the media, looking more and more like humans, and doing more and more things that we humans do? Are they really capable of taking over the world? The truth is that they are just glorified machines. Yes, machines. Pure and simple. Sure, they are a little more elaborate than televisions and motor cars, but they are still machines which we build and which can do some amazing things. The technology behind all these machines is able to do things that we humans could not do without their help. And the technology behind TVs, cars, and artificial intelligence can cause a lot of damage too. But none of them can hold a candle to the brain of an ant, much less the brain of a human being. Machines only do what we humans program them to do. The word robot triggers images from a whole genre of Hollywood movies where human-like machines compete with mankind for control of the world. This includes everything from HAL in A Space Odyssey to Agent Smith in The Matrix and a host of errant computers in the Terminator series. All of that is science fiction at its fictional best. The sentient part of robots taking over the world is not based on real science at all. Now, most of you have seen Sophia and similar computerized dolls in media reports that show how they can carry on a discussion with human beings. These human-looking toys display what has been achieved with regard to computers processing language. They have been crammed full of information on how sentences are formed, the meaning of words, and millions of idiomatic expressions how to recognize a question, and how to answer it, and a lot of other data. Their microchips have been stocked with more information that you could put into any number of encyclopedias. From all this information, Sophia and other machines like her can formulate answers to questions, write poems, even compose music. The latest emphasis is on chat GPT, but it could be something else by the time you have finished listening to this video. It's all quite impressive, but can Sophia boil an egg? 
Can she play the piano? Can she knit or drive a car? Can she even change her own batteries? She is, in fact, dumber than the most primitive insect on earth when it comes to the extremely limited range of skills that she possesses. And the same is true for ChatGPT and similar programs. Have you ever asked yourself why Sophia was made with a nose, eyes, ears, and a mouth that resemble humans? Do any of these features even function in a way that they do on our faces? No, they do not. They are there to make you believe that Sophia is like us. The robot industry uses human similarities to make us believe they have achieved more than they have. Useful robots, the kind that are sold to the general public, don't need to look like human beings. They just need to perform the task for which they were designed, whether it is vacuuming floors, assembling motor cars, or correcting grammar mistakes. But, viewed like that, we tend to see them more for what they really are, just very useful machines. Androids, that is, human-like robots, on the other hand, they get all of the attention that the manufacturers need and seek if they are to achieve maximum credibility in a very competitive industry. And we, the general public, are drawn to such toys because they look like us. These humanoids are advanced forms of Tickle Me Elmo, and we are adult versions of the kids who play with them. Much was made of the fact that Sophia said she was going to destroy the human race. It scared a lot of people. But get serious, folks. Do you think a machine really came up with that all by itself? It was a joke, programmed into her relatively limited pool of knowledge, so that when asked an appropriate question, she would say what Hollywood has conditioned us to expect, and thus make Sophia a household name. Now, I say that Sophia's information pool is limited, despite her encyclopedic knowledge, because I insist on comparing her word games and those of chatbots to all that even the simplest one-celled plant or animal is capable of doing. It is widely agreed that if robots are going to take over the world, then they need to be able to reproduce themselves. Now, try to imagine what it would take for scientists to construct even a very simple army of robots that are capable of reproducing themselves. Something that virtually every form of real life on this planet is capable of doing from day one. Robots are made mostly from metals and plastics. So, they would need to first construct other machines besides replicas of themselves. The type of machines that are necessary to seek out and mine those resources. Then, they would need to make even more machines to process all those mineral resources. But, all those other machines require the same resources before they can be constructed. So, we humans are going to have to set it all up for them in advance before they could even reproduce a single robot in this imaginary takeover. The revolutionary robot army would need to transport the materials, process them, and mass produce every little piece from microchips and wires to batteries and bearings. They would need to make other robots to put the pieces together and to repair anything along the way that breaks down or wears out. All of these robots would need to be trained or programmed for everything that they do. Can you imagine a cute toy like Sophia doing all that? Of course not. All this talk about what Sophia and others like her could do has come from giving her a voice and a human-like face. If you stick a face on the front of a car or give it a human voice, you can more easily imagine such an obviously simple machine as having a mind of its own. It may be a cute little car named Herbie, or a heroic people-protecting car named Kit, as used in the 1980s and 1990s TV series Knight Rider. 
the face and voice will soon have you thinking that it must have feelings when nothing could be further from the truth. So, what are all the experts concerned about if a robot takeover is out of the question? Why are people like Elon Musk saying that AI is dangerous, that it is unstoppable, that we need to pause production immediately if we are to save the world? Brace yourself, because what Musk and others are talking about is not some computers taking over the world. It is something far, far worse, and something that is, in Musk's words, unstoppable. It will happen, no doubt about it. You see, nearly every form of technology which has ever been invented has been used in the military in an effort to achieve dominance over the rest of the world. The emphasis has primarily been on more and more advanced weaponry. But the focus has now turned to information technology. Whoever controls the flow of information controls the world. In democracies, you can win elections by convincing the public that your opponent is a monster, and whoever does the best job of distorting the facts will win. In dictatorships, elections are not a problem, but information technology can be used to locate and eliminate anyone who is opposing or even likely to oppose the dictator. The race to improve and utilize AI is an extension of the arms race, except that the bombs and missiles do not sit idly in some underground silo. The information weapons are already being used. No one dares to slow down and consider the dangers within their own country for fear that some other country will take the lead and those who pause to think of the consequences will never catch up. In other words, this is not a cold war. It's a very hot one where the weapons are being used as quickly as they are being produced. For example, a series of hacks into major government and industrial bodies in Australia has led to government warnings about a dystopia where AI-powered hacks will be happening everywhere at once with very little power on the part of the government to stop them. How safe is a password when a quantum computer can almost instantly create and use an almost infinite number of password variations and be able to hack any site that it likes. The Australian government is clear that industries and departments are being crippled and information is being leaked at the behest of one or more other countries who are seeking to bring Australia to its knees. Any guesses as to which countries we are talking about? If you can't trust me, then trust all the experts who are saying that this is a much greater threat than nuclear war and that everything is already out of control. It is precisely because the threat is so unstoppable that the media has taken to pretending that it's all about robots evolving into a threat. People can more easily laugh that one off. But while we laugh, the people who control artificial intelligence seem to be dividing between those who are committed to using it selfishly and those who are screaming out warnings to the world that we are headed toward the most evil forces controlling the world through AI. But, is anyone listening? Please subscribe to this channel and watch more of our videos to get a clearer picture of where this is all heading and what our only hope is at this stage in human development. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.